slowdowns when there are cars uh, going below a bridge. The issue here again is that the radar does not have too much vertical resolution. So radar reports a stationary object in front of you. It's as if like the radar doesn't know that there's if it's there's like a stationary car in front of you or if it's the bridge above. It cannot differentiate those two. So radar thinks that there might be something stationary in front. And it's just like looking for something in vision to tell it that it might be correct. And then we create a stationary target and break. And so in this case, in the legacy vision uh, predictions, which were already producing depth and velocity, but th because we were using radar, the vision inaccuracies were being masked. And so the depth and velocity were not held up to high enough bar. And so basically what happens is vision reports a slightly, for a few frames, reports a slightly too negative velocity for the car. And then it associates to the stationary object and the stack is like, oh, that must be the stationary thing, and then we break. And so um, this, of course, is much cleaner. And you see that the new stack uh, does not see this at all, and there's no track, there's no uh, slowdowns in this case, um, because we just get the correct depth and velocity. And vision obviously has the vertical resolution to differentiate a bridge from a car, and whether or not the car is slowing or not. Uh, so again, you could go into the vision, the radar stack, or the sensor fusion stack, and if you have an improved depth and velocity, you could change the fusion strategy. Uh, but again, you're just kind of like doing dead work. Like this signal is so good by itself. Why would you? Why would you do that? Um, so in this in this setting now, we uh, we've improved the situation quite a lot. Here's another last example. Um, we have a stationary approach. Again, this is in track testing environment. Uh, this is an example of a test that we would run, and we are just approaching this vehicle and hoping to stop. What you see in orange in the legacy stack is that it actually takes us quite a bit of time for us to start slowing. And basically what's happening here is that the radar is very trigger happy and it sees all these false stationary objects everywhere. Like everything that like sticks out is a, is a stationary target. And radar by itself doesn't know what actually is a stationary car and what isn't. So it's waiting for vision to associate with it. And vision, if it's not held up to a high enough bar, is noisy and contributes um, sort of error. And the sensor fusion stack just kind of like picks it up too late. And so again, you could fix all that, even though it's a very gross uh, system with a lot of statements and so on. Uh, because the sensor fusion is complicated because the error modes for vision and radar are, are slightly are quite different. Uh, but here, when we just work with vision alone and we take out the radar, uh, vision recognizes this object very early, gives the correct depth and velocity, and there's no issues. So we actually get an initial slowdown much earlier. And uh, we've really like, simplified the stack a lot. And, uh, and uh, we've also deployed this in shadow modes and uh, seen that this stack performs fairly well. So in particular, for example, for the automatic emergency braking, we actually see a higher precision and recall. Uh, compared to the legacy stack that is a fusion stack. And so having seen all this, we've actually released this. We've accumulated about 15 million miles so far. Um, and 1.7 million of those have been on autopilot. And so far, there have been no crashes. Now, of course, we're running at uh, massive scale here. And so we do expect some crashes at some point. Uh, the legacy stack uh, has a crash roughly every 5 million miles or so, I believe. And so we do expect some uh, some incidents uh, at, um, at some point. Uh, but this... Uh, the improvements for the vision stack are not sort of stopping. So I think we're very confident that uh, we're barking up the right tree here and that uh, we can actually get this to work really incredibly well as well. So in summary, what I try to argue and give you a sense of is uh, vision alone is actually in our, is our finding that this is perfectly capable of depth sensing. Um, it is an incredibly rich sensor in terms of bandwidth of information. And doing this and matching radar performance and depth and velocity is incredibly hard. I believe it requires the fleet uh, because the data set that we were able to achieve was critical in all these performance uh, improvements. And if you do not have the fleet, I'm not 100% sure how you can source all the difficult and diverse scenarios that we did source, um, because I believe that was critical to getting this to work. So it's hard, it requires massive networks, a supercomputer, and a, and a data engine, and the fleet. Um, but all of these components are coming together in, um, in a vertically integrated fashion at Tesla AI. And I believe that this makes us uh, sort of uniquely positioned in the industry where um, we are barking up the right tree and we have all the puzzle pieces to make this, to make this work.